Marie Cecile, you were just coming back from Addis Abeba, where you participated in a in a meeting of the uh, of CTA, the Technical Center for Agriculture and Rural Cooperation. Mm -hmm. And it had organized uh, the meeting for representatives of farmer organizations and private companies to learn more about value chains for transforming smallholder agriculture. Can you say that your expectations of the meeting were met? And maybe you can give us one example in terms of what you consider to be the most important insight that you gained there? Yeah, I think this uh, conference work was quite interesting. They, they managed to gather more or less 500 people from, as you say, the farmers' organization, private sector, but also uh, researchers, uh, representative of governments and regional organizations, quite a few people from NGO and uh, international organization working on value chain. So it was a quite a good mixture of experience and uh, they named it uh, making the connection and I think it was one of the most uh, interesting thing in this conference is the diversity and the interest of these people. All of them were convinced that what they were doing were uh, important and uh, were really uh, supporting farmers so they were really eager to share their experience so it was a good place to be to make uh, new contacts and to hear about uh, new initiatives, uh, either small ones or uh, initiative value chain organization that would uh, be implemented at regional or international uh, market mm -hmm. level. So it was quite a good mixture. So what was the biggest insight, the, the nicest thing that you learned there, the most astonishing thing, as you, if you will? Well, um, as you may know, for uh, French people working in uh, development, uh, value chain approach is not really a new thing. We have been uh, working uh, with this methodology for a long time. It was its name in France, uh, approche filière. But uh, the way it seems now, it's quite interesting. Uh, we used to look more from production, organization of the producers, uh, trying to organize the market and supporting uh, product at the market. And I think that uh, what is new now is that we first look at what is needed by the market. Uh, what are the new demands from the urban population? Uh, what are the changing diets? What are the opportunities given by regional markets and international markets? So it's a different view. Uh, instead of coming from the producers, to the consumers, uh, value chain approach, the new value chain approach proposed to go from the uh, consumers to the producers. And I think it's much more uh, dynamic and much more productive. So that so, would be the supply chain rather than from, that, from their perspective. That's you know. right. So for us, it's something we still have to change, I think, I think in our way of thinking. Uh, although I thought uh, some um, initiative that has been developed through the supply, uh, supply chain approach is uh, also inter interesting for the value chain approach. For example, uh, interprofessional organization is something that should certainly be reinforced. Trying to put in the same place around the same table uh, traders, producers, consumers. I think this is still quite lacking. And it's still uh, still uh, very fragmented. Uh, there was also a lot of uh, demand around financing of uh, value chain. And I think that uh, experience who had been uh, developed around the supply chain approach could be also proposed for the value chain approach. And um, last, maybe I think was uh, it was also interesting to to see that um, well for us. It was very interesting to see all the experience that has been developed food crops a lot for the local market. I think for the value chain and supply chain approach, it's one of the main difficulties. Uh, we more or less know how to organize and support the value chain for export, export, but it's much more difficult when you are on a fragmented market like the local market, uh, where you have a lot of uh, uh, selling opportunities for the producers, so they are not really eager mm. to follow contracts. 
Uh, they don't have the same constraints on quality, although the demand of the urban market is increasing. So there were quite a lot of uh, interesting uh, experience on the uh, step of food uh, value chain that I think we should look more and uh, could maybe promote in uh, different countries. And uh, also I thought what was interesting is that few, ex uh, few experiments was proposed on the regional market. And I think for Africa, it's, uh, it's a big stake. And uh, there was a very interesting experience from Zimbabwe to supply the South African market with a different type of food. Uh, it was uh, organized uh, with a nucleus farm, uh, gathering small farmers around it and to to increase the real volume proposed to the South African market, but at the same time, uh, making sure that the quality that was the supply was uh, at the level of the demand. So I think they were quite an uh, interesting uh, initiative, and uh, all of them are available, or, or will be available, I think, on the website of the conference. Come to think of it, one thing that interests me in terms of supply chain idea is, um, resilience from the management perspective of the companies that actually need a constant flow of s supply and there's external shocks by climate or whatever that, that, that cause a problem for them. So there's a different resilience idea when it comes to looking at the big company that needs to make sure that it gets its supply. So they will probably look at different sources. Is there anything from that perspective that uh, that's coming well, it was it was mentioned this problem of uh, of risk, but I, I don't think anything really new came out. It was uh, insurance mm -hmm. were were mentioned, but not really. Um, well, it was also mentioned, but at the at the end, uh, unfortunately, it's usually the producers who are supporting most of the risk, especially the weather risk. But uh, there was some initiative uh, presented that, especially around contracts. Well, you could see that um, I think about uh, a seed, a seed uh, production. I think it was in uh, Tanzania, where uh, the the company, the enterprise, was uh, supporting part of a risk. So when the weather was bad and the production was not at the level of uh, of what was uh, intended, they would uh, they would lower they they would uh, not Put any, how do you say? Um, uh, the, 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 it was not a problem. They would just buy what was available, and mm. they would not put penalties. Yeah, that's right. And uh, there was also another approach. I think it was in Senegal on staple food. They would propose contract only on part of the crop, uh, saying that uh, they would, for example, uh, propose a contract on 25 to 30 percent of the crop. And the rest would be uh, possibly uh, uh, sell to the company, but it could also be sold to other buyers. And uh, that would um, make it easy also uh, for managing the uh, production default. But at the same time, as you can see, it's always more or less the producer who, is, uh, who has to bear the, the, the cost of the crop uh, failure. Yeah. But there's no penalties linked to the contract. That was some possibilities. Uh, you, you you mentioned already uh, the the French point of view that you have a longer history looking at the value chain. Um, you should mention that you work for AfD for the French Development Agency. And uh, was there anything in particular, um, an idea that came up there at the meeting that that has a a particular would be of a particular interest to the French agency. Um, yeah, I think uh, uh, on, on, as I was saying before, I think we still think too much on uh, the production side, and we we should really try to shift more, especially on for staple food. And uh, it's one sector where we have been quite weak, and I think it's because we were not really able to to understand the market. Um, and to to see how to support enterprise that would like to 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 
get involved in this uh, local and regional market. So I think that's really something quite strong that came out from this uh, from this uh, conference. I think the other point was uh, about the role of government. Um, the role of government was not really clear. On one side, you had people saying just don't get involved. Once you are involved, it's really always a problem. And uh, especially with short-term initiatives that uh, really disrupt uh, the market. But at the same time, there was a clear demand for more regulation, um, a more uh, business-oriented uh, uh, policies, for more, um, I would say, trade coherent uh, policies. So it was a bit uh, uh, love and hate a relation with government mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, I think uh, it, things are getting a bit uh, clearer that uh, the government, government can be of course very harmful for value chain and business but it's also uh, uh, a stakeholder that is needed and it's needed at national and at regional level and even of course at international level with a problem of uh, agricultural policy and trade policy coherence. So, it didn't come out with clear proposal or recommendations for government, but at least it, it came out that it was not, as it was said at the beginning of the conference, some stakeholder that should be completely out of the discussion. So I think this is also an opening for, for us that is interesting, because as you may know, IFD is working with enterprise, with farmer organization, but of course, as most of the bilateral uh, organization, we are also working with government. So. It's really a problem of coherence and uh, of long-term um, uh, view, and uh, we shouldn't uh, have only short-term uh, views like, you know, uh, subsidies for inputs, but only one or two years, or uh, uh, selling uh, subsidized products uh, on, uh, on the national market one year and nothing else the second year. So I think that was really clear. So, sir. So from your point of view, is there a particular way that uh, is unique to IFD in the way that they support the value chain approach? I, uh, I had the opportunity to present uh, one of our uh, program that is supporting the rumber plantation in Ghana. And it's, uh, it's a financing mechanism that goes through a, a commercial bank and that supports loans for 16 years. And 16 years is quite... Uh, uh, rare for agriculture and uh, many uh, participants were interested by the mechanism we developed so of course it was for rubber uh, plantation and uh, rubber is a product with uh, increasing price on the international market and it's uh, there's a, a high, high demand for this product so it may certainly easier than for other products but at the same time they were quite interested to see how we work with the government, with a commercial bank, and with a producer organization uh, to, to get everything tuned around the value chain so that the financing was uh, adapted to the constraint of the production. Now, we've been talking about IFD here, and you, you're the focal point to the Global Donor Platform for Rural Development. And as that, you know also that we have in January, the next January, the Platform's General Assembly in Den Haag, which will look specifically at the promotion of value chains. Now, from your opinion, which aspects or results from the ADIS meeting right now should be covered during the AGA? What, what can you bring there? What, what is a particular focus that is of importance? I think that, uh, as I was saying for the government, the role of a donor is not clear also. It's, uh, as soon as you, are, uh, you have a, a mixture between uh, producers and enterprise, uh, private sector, it's always difficult to understand where is the role of the government and where is the role of a donor. There was a lot of uh, discussion about NGOs not being business oriented and then uh, disturbing value chain. There was also uh, some discussion about uh, donor organization not uh, um, fueling, fueling uh, no, uh, I would say, business uh, channels. So I think it's one of our uh, take is how as donor we can really support uh, business 
activities, uh, as they support and not disturbing them. And it's, uh, I think it's uh, really something we have to think about. So, and I think for, to think about it, uh, we have to make a difference between export value chain and uh, value chain for local or regional uh, market. I think we, it's quite different. Uh, the instrument we can uh, mobilize, the way we are, the, the, the stakeholder we are speaking to, the organization that we can uh, support are quite different. And in uh, each of these uh, sort of value chain, they are, uh, the, 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 we, we, we can support them, but we have to think about how to be really in the private sector um, uh, dynamic. And I think it's quite difficult for donors. So I think that could be really one of, so I think that's more uh, uh, an umbrella question. But uh, within, uh, within this, um, this uh, question, I think we, there was some, uh, some uh, questioning about how to go from pilot to, uh, and to upscale, from pilot pro uh, programs and projects and how to upscale them. Mm -hmm. so for example, from the national to the regional uh, level. There was there was also a question on the of course the sustainability and uh, this was uh, raised either for the organization some organizations are, are pushed by projects and programs so of course it's, uh, there's a problem of sustainability but there was also a big question on financing value chain how the financing that were proposed by donor could be after the, after some time uh, sustained by banks or a microfinance organization and it seems that there's not yet a lot of uh, good uh, initiatives or such success story on the issue thank you very much thank you